You were mentioning how great Justin Herbert has been, and he's been sensational. He got a huge contract. Going into the season, everybody thought one of the better defenses in the league. Having J.C. Jackson for a full season, Derwin James, and Joey Bosa. This team has a ton of great defensive players. Why do you think that this defense is really not really produced in the last three weeks? I don't know. All those guys you just named, they're named studs on that team, you know, and they're all well paid for doing what they do. Honestly, I couldn't tell you what, what that, you know, the, the lack of production on the defensive side, but the Chargers have had average special teams, great defenses. They finally got themselves a, a good quarterback. And now that I feel like they're wasting the middle part of his career. And so, you know, God forbid he gets injured because I just think that that Chargers team is is really built all around him. And if, if he stays healthy, then there are a chance they're going to score some points. But if not, then, uh, you know, they're going to struggle down there. A lot of players have been attacking the NFL about the grass and the turf, complaining that it's causing a lot of ankle injuries and knee injuries and Achilles injuries. What are your thoughts as a kicker? Do you believe that this is the reason why a lot of these players are getting hurt as fast as they are? Honestly, I think a lot of it, it gets back to the fact they don't hit a lot in practice, you know, and, and so you get live in a game. There's no way you can simulate that without hitting hard in practice. And so it's like every everything in practice now is brother-in-lawing each other. They don't really go in full pads and then you put them full go. And it's like walking across the side street and then trying to run across the five freeway on Sundays. And I just think <laughs> that extra effort and the extra stress on those guys on a weekend is really affecting them. And then the other thing is only having a couple of preseason games. These guys come out of preseason going, oh, well, I sort of half half ran, half did everything during preseason, and now it's serious when the season starts, and that's what the, we, all the players were talking about, going to a 17-game live season without four preseason games, and I know the owners wanted to do that because they're obviously making more money, but now you've got guys playing half a preseason game and then going live the following week, and I think that contributes to early season injuries. Teams being aggressive going for it on fourth down, more often than we've usually seen, obviously Brandon Staley with the Chargers is the king of it, going for it on his own 23-yard line, it almost cost him the game. He should be fired. Yeah. Kirk Cousins just had a bigger brain fart, and the Chargers held on. So, what are your thoughts on this, like, aggression movement with going for it on fourth down, even, like, on seven yards? I think Philly did it on seven yards. Is this going to be the wave of the league from now on? Look, I think we have a lot of these money ball sort, sort of science guys in the league nowadays, and they, you know, they, they look at numbers rather than actual practical plays and go in this situation we should do this and then Philadelphia you know having those short yardage fourth fourth down plays where they they've been quite successful now you know if you've got a Jordan Mylata who's six foot eight 375 pounds and he's an ex-rugby player it looks a lot like a rugby scrum in those fourth and short uh with with Jalen Hurts in the back there not everyone can repeat that and, but I think guys are looking at it going, oh, this is the new trend. Like everyone's going away from running backs. Now everybody's got to go for it on fourth down. And until something bad happens, you know, Bill Belichick was the dumbest coach in the history of the NFL because he went for it on one fourth down and didn't get it. I mean, the, you know, so I think people overreact to a lot of this stuff. But I think also coaches are copycats. They've had it run against them and went, man, I wish I could go for it on fourth and seven and get it. And the one time it's been run against them, then they go out and try and run it themselves. And they're not always successful. Like I said, you can't buy a 6'8", 370-pound ex-rugby player on your left side of your line every day. Do you see the reason why these kickers are missing these 45, 50-yard kicks than we haven't seen over the last couple of years? So my theory as an ex-player is I watch the footballs. And this season, the footballs are as pink and as shiny as I've ever seen. And every time, every year in the off-season, the NFL brings in new rules. How many times you can work the ball how long you can work the football for, and each equipment manager has to adjust. Something has happened this year with the way they're allowed to touch those footballs because the footballs normally come out a little bit chocolate brown, not as much as the as the quarterback balls, but every game I've watched, I watched Presley Harvin the other night in the Steelers game, and I'm like, how are you catching that ball? All the lights were, were gleaming off that football. It was so shiny. <laughs> and so I think that it contributes to it. You know, those footballs... They've either changed the Wilson's either changed the formula of the footballs in the offseason, which I don't think's happened, or they they're limiting what the equipment managers can do. They used to only have 20 minutes pre-game to work those footballs, and some of the equip the experienced equipment managers, instead of working six footballs, they only work two. One equipment manager would work two, and the other would work two, and that would be your kicking balls during the game. But the, the, every game I've seen this year, those footballs look shiny and like overworked and very pink. So it looks like whatever they've been able to do to it has been limited and it's affecting the kicks.